Hello, welcome to my channel. Today we're looking into the disappearance of Robert Marvin. Um, missing from Moab, Utah, somewhere between sometime in September 1984, 55 years old, 5'9", 155 pounds. Um, it says he was last seen leaving his residence. Moab, Utah, successful businessman, traveled back and forth, Moab to Albuquerque, New Mexico. He was seen September 12, 1984 at a gas station in Moab, Utah. He had an orange and white 1974 Volkswagen convertible, which was later found at the Albuquerque, New Mexico airport. Strawberry blonde hair or blonde brown hair with some gray in it. Let's see. There's a description of his clothes and items. And I'll scroll back up slowly, so if you want to pause it and read any of the information you can okay then i go on to the next page okay there's a photo of him from that the charlie project five foot nine fifty five years old and you can pause this and read it if you want to successful geologist employed santa fe mining traveled back and forth moab albuquerque new mexico this says he left home at 9.30 a.m. telling his girlfriend, who was going to look at condominiums in Colorado. His family reported him missing, not his girlfriend, on September 6th, after Santa Fe Mining called looking for him. So his family reported him missing September 6th. This says he was last seen September 4th at his residence with his girlfriend, but... His car was at the gas station at September 12th. Was he in it or was somebody else in it and I was mistaken? I don't get that. Um, traces of blood. On, his orange and white Volkswagen was later found at the airport. There were, He had several of his personal belongings were there. That was September 29th, including his tobacco pouch. There were traces of blood on the pouch, but not enough to determine whether it was his or not. He didn't take any money out of his bank accounts before disappearing. And his last paycheck was never cashed. So who put his car at the airport? Was that to make it look like he had flown out of there or something? His wife was murdered in Albuquerque in 1979, five years before his disappearance. She was shot to death in the car at the Albuquerque International Airport at some point. And her body was found by her two sons. Marvin was allegedly in Canada on a business trip at the time. His wife's murder remains unsolved, and it's unclear if the case is related to, her, her dis to his later disappearance. So then it makes you wonder if he, who killed his wife, and they just left her body there. If they killed him too, wouldn't they have just left his body there if they had killed him in the car? I don't get it. And who killed his wife and why? Was it? To do, uh, you know, you wouldn't think it had anything to do with this business or anything, so I don't know. All sorts of questions. My mind is going everywhere, but I don't want to mention it all. So, last seen at a gas station. This is last seen at a gas station September 4th. So, see, there's discrepancies here because the other one said it was a different day. Anyway, prominent Albuquerque geologist. Santa Fe Mining Company, traveled back and forth, Moab, Utah, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, he had left Albuquerque August 31st to spend the weekend with his girlfriend in Moab. So, he went to spend the weekend with his girlfriend in Moab, Utah, August 31st. And to me, that seems like that's the last time anybody ever see, saw him. But she said that he left to go to Colorado to look for condominiums. So we don't know. And then the Santa Fe mining company called looking for him and his family who had thought he was out of town for business filed a missing persons report. Did they not know he had a girlfriend? Law enforcement officers in Utah, New Mexico, and Colorado searched for Marvin. His orange and white convertible was located at the airport. And then a couple weeks after, so, and that's when they found the personal items and the traces of blood. So, and it doesn't say there's traces of blood in the car and around inside the car. It just says it's on his pouch. Like if 
he died somewhere and somebody stuck his patch in there and stuck his car at the airport. But I don't know for sure. I'm just speculating. His wife was Lola Marvin, who was murdered July 1979, found shot to death in her car at the airport. The homicide occurred when Robert Marvin was allegedly in Canada on company business. And I say allegedly because every time I get to that part, I cough or I sneeze and I have to start doing the video again. So I just decided to add allegedly so I could see if I could get through the video. Um, and you wonder, you wonder if it's somebody he knew and someone that his wife knew or somebody that he knew. You know, you just... All these questions, why did they kill him? But we don't know because we don't, you know, we don't know that much about his life, his business life, his personal life, or anything like that. So, or anybody they were connected with. So here we have, um, we're going to look at John Doe's, and I'm, I just have a bunch of John Doe's I'm going through. If you think it's one of them, then you can decide. But we have this one, St. David, Arizona, found January 29th, 1992, five foot nine, can't estimate the height estimated year of death was between 1972 and 1991 so partial skeletal remains found near a highway right away fence so uh, skeletal remains found by ADOT workers while inspecting right away fence and you can pause it and read it all so they don't know Blue denim jeans, reddish maroon jacket. They don't know the color of the hair or anything like that. Okay, next one is 5'4 to 5'8. Some of them I decided to leave in there whether they were the right age or exactly the right height because I just thought I'll leave them in there. Colorado Springs, Colorado, in case you went to Colorado, 1982 to 1986. Traumatic injuries, homicide, shot once in the head and awful, also suffered blunt force trauma to the head. 30 to 40 years old, which would be younger than him, but Calvin Klein denim jeans, 30, 33, light blue green fragment of a sweater, a t-shirt, one inch wide brown belt, which was fragmented and partially gnawed upon with yellow metal buckle, a possible leather watch band or wristwatch, November 3rd, 1986, 11:13 a.m., the victim's skeletal remains were located in a field in southern El Paso County, four miles west of I-25. So it sounds like somebody just got off of the I-25 to drop off those remains. It doesn't mean they were, so I don't know if they were in that area or from that area. So then we have one in rural Clear Creek County, Colorado, August 24, 2007. Partial skeletal parts only, cause of death unknown. Estimated date of death unknown. 35 to 45 years old. How old was he again? 55 or something? Yeah, 55. So, but I'm going to leave it in there. Human skull that was found in rural Clear Creek County, Colorado, near Georgetown. So, We'll go to the next one is Walden, Colorado. As far back as 1933 is the estimated date of death. Could be as far back as 1933. Ages 18 to 99. Male, they don't know. Sometimes if it's a female, they put it under mouth. They're not sure if it's female or male. So they found a skull. So I don't know if that's... I don't know if that's one of those that could be male or female or if, they just, or if it actually is male. Because they list the females under, if they don't know if it's male or female, they list it under male. Um, Alamosa County, Colorado, September 10th, 2008. Estimated date of death unknown, cause of death unknown. Gender unknown, see, sometimes. Available extensive dental work with some individual tooth replacement. A man walking his dog discovered the victim's skull in a shallow grave on the East Range southwest of South, I don't know how to pronounce that, Canyon on a private land. All cases in which the gender of the victim is unknown are assigned and filed as male. So, um, this one, Santa Fe, New Mexico, because I thought, well, New Mexico, years prior, it doesn't give a date, April 29, 2007, race unsure, 20 to 60 years old, gender male, um, I don't know, I thought this one maybe looked a little bit similar to him 
for the reconstruction. The victim was located 250 feet off of the Brigo Trail, 740 Hyde Park Road. The area is below the Santa Fe Ski Basin. So, I don't know, maybe somebody was skiing and wrecked and died. Who knows? Um, this one, this one says two years prior, but I always, you know, I, I, I'm crazy and I'll think things like, well, maybe they put him in the freezer. I just thought it looked similar to him, but I'm sure it's not because it would be 1992, but I'm leaving it in there. Kane County, Utah. This was found in Utah two years prior. Blunt force trauma to the head. Five foot eleven to six foot tall. He was five foot nine. <laughs> See, it's way out there on a limb, isn't it? Brown with a touch of gray of the hair. Described as having big bones and rugged features. Let's play jacket. May have been green and white on the outside with a blue quilted liner, size extra large, plaid red, plaid red. White and black long sleeve flannel shirt, blue 501 denim jeans, button fly, waist size 33, pro action sneakers size 11 and a half, red baseball cap, shattered sunglasses, three papers were found in a pocket, a jail sheriff's booking sheet, well that's definitely not going to be him, a court document from Flagstaff, Arizona Justice Court, both from, I don't know how to pronounce that, and an article clip from a newspaper which listed events describing entertainment at a Flagstaff, Arizona bar. So maybe this was someone who was going to watch the entertainment or was part of the entertainment. A whole human skull was found by hikers one quarter mile south of State Road 89. The skull was found in a crevice in a rugged area. So does that mean they were part of that entertainment? Or if they knew somebody that was part of the entertainment. That's interesting. Okay, so then we have this one. Fort Worth, Tarrant County, Texas. Two months prior to discovery, that would have been... Maybe. Homicide, 50 to 70 years old. 5 foot 10, 175. Hair color black and gray or partially gray. Short gray hair on sides. Black socks. Victim was found in a creek bed in Texas. So, don't think that's him. But, Las Vegas, Clark County, Nevada. Three to six months prior. That one could be him. Not recognizable. Partial skeleton. 35 to 60 years old. White male. Possibly light brown hair. There were two small patches of hair found around the remains. Appeared to have an old area of trauma in the distal end of the right oh, the skull that connects to the cranial and temporal bones with the, yeah, huh? Um, had lower teeth, upper denture. Victim's partial skeletal remains were found in a desert wash near a construction site about two miles west of Rainbow Boulevard south of Sahara Avenue. The remains consist of an essential intact skull and cervical vertebrae. So, three to six months prior, that could be him. That's a long drive. That one, I don't think so. That one, I don't think so. This one, I don't know. New Mexico, so maybe. Um, there's the one in Colorado. There's another one in Colorado. Some of these could be anybody, so that one's too young, but left it in there. And this one is too young, but I left it in there. And this one is about the right age and stuff, but could be almost anybody. So there he is, and we don't know what happened to him. So. If Maybe somebody out there has been talking over the years and told somebody something and you're questioning it, thinking, oh, they were just kidding or I didn't really believe them. Or, you know, if you have information, contact authorities, please, and give them that information so that the family can have closure. Maybe you think that just because if they find it, it's skeletal remains that the family is not going to be able to do anything with them because they won't be able to possibly have a funeral. But you got to realize maybe they'll be able to scatter the ashes or, or something like that. 
and it will help them to have closure to be able to find out what happened to their loved one. So if you have information, maybe you gave the information years ago to authorities and you feel like they didn't make notes of it or you're not sure if they still have that information because maybe you think the case file could have been lost considering all the different ways that we've stored the information over the different years between paper, um, what are those things called that you type into, I don't know why I can't remember the word, word processors, and then uh, floppy disks, and then software programs that crashed and things like that. So if you have information, or maybe you had the information back then, and you knew things, but you were afraid to come forward, or maybe you feel like, you know, maybe you feel like that you've heard information that other people have given to authorities, and so you think authorities have that information, but you're not sure, you know, just let them know. Maybe you feel like it's not relevant, you're not sure if it's true. Let them decide all of that. Don't even think about it. Just give them any information that you have. That's one load off of you, and the burden falls on them to decide what they feel is relevant and what they feel is not. Anyway, don't forget to pray for his loved ones and his families. And if you know who any of these John Does might be, please contact authorities and let them know that as well. Please feel free to leave comments. And have a blessed day. Bye-bye.